Why indeed? Why indeed, teacher of God, should you guess about perspectives of self-identity that necessitate your distinction between ideas of formulation of mass density particle identity and the totality of the idea of a light form of truth that's available to you through the instructions that you are receiving in the faculty of exchange of our new mind's identity about who we are. It's good to see you in this new perspective of time. It is occurring on a constant continuing basis. The success of the endeavor in which you have pursued within your own mind the possibility of the conversion of the light form that heretofore demonstrated your capacity to organize conflict we call this self-consciousness. Remember? Remember in the videos that were just completed, the new vision that you're seeing with me now is nothing but our attempts to momentarily, within the power of love, to distract you from the idea that it's necessary for you to retain that conflict. And in the conversion of is the simple recognition that in the constancy that is the purpose for a continuing alteration of the idea of yourself. You are in a new vision. Here's a little idea about the title we're going to give you. A teacher of God. A teacher in the wholeness of any mind, of the purpose for which you would be in an occupancy of space-time, demanding the attention to you within the dream faculty that heretofore, until the beginning of this association in time, you have been unable to see a true image of how you look within your own relationship. And the time uh, is on us now, isn't it? Within the factoring of the dream, in the recognition of the converting agency of light, so beautifully demonstrated by my Savior, Jesus, the faculty of body identity, where he appears with us, in the immediacy of the availability of the transformation of the mind. Many of you are now familiar on the new satellite with what is constituted as conversion of light form based on a simple admission that in the process of correspondence of space-time there is another faculty of light going on in a consistent reference of a variation of the illusion of the idea of body form that has held you in the bondage of a perspective within the illusion that a constancy of conversion was not available to you. The power of your mind to demonstrate through a single whole mind. And we call this uh, Jesus of Nazareth, very simply because the instructions that you were given, and that you were given in this reference, were simply to look at the particulars of your own mind in regard to what you want to see in the uh, idea that you are trapped within association of the power of your mind, listen carefully, without the availability of the immediacy of a converting nature 
that would show you in an instant the necessity for your participation of thought process of mine within your own idea of yourself to increase the frequency of the conversion of space. This is uh, Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, the power of your mind to increase the frequency that eliminates the conflict that you feel in yourself is being demonstrated through a science of the mind. And this is purely Jesus now. The, the use of the term, incidentally, if I uh, uh, with Jesus and the New Testament, I'm going to be speaking about loop quantum gravity, parallel universes, and fundamental princess ideas that the New Testament demonstrates the word that they use in science is anthropic. It's an interesting perspective within the objective idea of relationships of the illusion within this little place in space-time. You somehow attempt to subtract your own consciousness identity from the inevitability that within the science of the mind it's impossible somewhere you are not in observation of what appears to be out there. Usually by the time you're a junior in high school, you begin to apply anthropic solutions that are the science evidence that unless you observe it, this is the whole idea of quantum. Are you gonna listen? Nothing objectively is happening. Can you see this? How you deal with it from the science approach of uh, loop quantum conversion doesn't concern me. But if I were to read to you the reasonableness of the inevitability of a time factor that has brought me into this continuum of time with you right now, and I'm demonstrating the term master teacher, I'm a formulation of body identity occurring within a frame of time using the power of my mind to continually reassociate ourselves objectively with what we want to see within a loop of energy that contains dark matter, what we would call potential to be used in the idea of the possibility of conversion. I'm gonna read you about two minutes about the idea of anthropic associations of the mind. Shall I tell you what it actually said? What I read you at the opening was the idea that the power of mind is a decision that you must make. And while there's no question you like to apply the power of the mind, the constancy of it, in regard to what you want to see as a reflection of your mind, always reduces with you the light power of the mind with the simple denial that there is only one power and that all the universe is going to contain that power. Okay, This is from the Science American magazine. Just a little bit about the resolution that no one really wants to look at. This. The Anthropic Principle. In 1961, the great cosmologist Robert Dick raised an interesting question. Given the infinite range of the real numbers, how do we explain the numerical fact that the universe is only about 10 billion years old? Why not some very different number? Dick gave what at first sounds like a ridiculous answer, which goes as follows, and almost all humans arrive at it somewhere in their association. In order for anyone to be around to ask this question, intelligent life must exist. This implies that the universe has to be old enough for planets to have formed and intelligent life to evolve. According to standard astronomical and evolutionary theories, that would take about 10 billion years. On the other hand, 
if the universe is very, very much older, the stars will all have burned out and could not support life. Therefore, there is a finite window of time for us to be here in order to ask the question,